All right. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. I'm very honored to be here to speak with you again today, bright and early on this Tuesday morning. I uh, hope you all had an awesome long weekend and got to enjoy some of that beautiful weather and hopefully have some, some really great family time. I'm going to, you know, might be a little bit of a different talk today than we've had on here before. Um, you know, I've known for some time that I'd be speaking here today, but I was having a, a bit of a hard time deciding what it was I wanted to speak to. You know, I kind of felt like God would put a, a message in my heart and provide the inspiration. Um, but to be honest, I, I've kind of been struggling at times lately, you know, to even have that sort of meaningful spiritual connection. Um, you know, it's not that I've been in a, in a really bad place or, or that I'm going through any sort of hardship or anything like that. I've just just kind of felt like I was in a bit of a rut, you know, and just kind of feel a little bit off, almost almost a bit numb feeling. And honestly, it's, it's kind of a lousy feeling. Um, but as this feeling kind of lingered with me, I, I, try, I was trying to analyze what it was I was feeling. And, and the word that kept popping into my head was apathy. Um, and you know, I, I really don't like the word apathy. It's not a word I often use. It's um, apathy means like a general indifference or a lack of caring or lack of concern. And, and I certainly don't want to describe any aspect of my life in that way. And certainly not as it pertains to my relationship with God. But, you know, I kind of realized that, that I was truly feeling apathetic. And, and, and of course, this, of course, made me feel guilty. And then I allowed that guilt to further build a barrier between myself and God. And, and, and as I sort of considered bringing this topic forward to this group, you know, I wasn't really sure what it means. And so I just, I just Googled Christian apathy. And as I started to put it into the, the search field, it, it auto populated, it came up right away. And, I, and a number of things popped up and I kind of felt, found that maybe my feelings, you know, weren't so unique after all. And, and thought that maybe, maybe God was indeed putting this word in my heart to share today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how that's, you know, impacted my life of late and some things that, that I think, you know, I, I've been trying to do for myself to sort of get back on, on, on spiritual track, so to speak. Um, so I needed to break this down a little bit more to understand, understand it better. I mean, even what is Christian apathy, that, that term I'd never, I'd never come across before. And, and why does it happen? You know, I think, how can we genuinely love God, you know, and desire to live in his honor and yet struggle at times to do that with enthusiasm? And then what do we do when, when indeed we feel in this way? Um, you know, I believe that apathy can, can sneak into our lives in a number of ways. Uh, and usually it's quite subtle. Uh, falling, into the, falling into the trap of apathy doesn't mean that you don't love God. And it doesn't put your faith in question. Um, apathy can affect Christians of every kind you know, in, in some way. Um, often it's, it's the shame of sin that can kind of become a wall that impedes our ability to connect with God. You know, it, it sort of blocks that spiritual connection, creates a, almost a bit of a numbing effect. And, and over time, you don't even realize that this can sort of simply become our norm. And, and before we know it, we've, we've kind of lost that intimate connection that is so critical to our growth as Christian men. But at other times, we may, we may feel like we're doing our part as a Christian, you know, meaning that we're you know, following the rules, so to speak. Um, but if we're not actually cultivating that genuine relationship with the Lord, then, you know, are we simply checking boxes at that point? You know, going through the motions as a Christian, it's, it's a dangerous thing. And it can almost certainly give the opportunity for apathy to slip in. Um, we've talked many times as a group here about the dangers of complacency. And I think that this is another area where allowing ourselves to maybe just do the minimum can lead us astray. So I kind of I tend to refer to this as I'm going through my, my notes and thinking this through as a lack of motivation, you know, but I don't really think that motivation is the right word. Um, I don't think it's a lack of motive per se. I mean, I have, I know I have a lengthy list of reasons to want to be a better man, you know, to be a better father, a better husband, a better Christian, as I'm sure all of you do. So so maybe to look, it's better to look at this as maybe a lack of sort of spiritual energy or enthusiasm instead of actually a lack of motivation. Um, but, but either way, uh, allowing ourselves to be stagnant means that we're not answering the call to continually grow in our relationship with the Lord. You know, I find that summer can be especially challenging for this. And, you know, while I've been able to spend some great time with my family, and I'm so grateful for that, I do have a harder time keeping my own regular routine in the summer. And so, 
I think I don't know this can this can be all it takes at times to just start to slowly slip into that lull. So what do we do then if we feel the plight of Christian apathy creeping in? Um, I'll be honest, when, when I'm feeling in the dumps spiritually, it feels daunting thinking about pulling myself out. Um, you know, I know in my heart that that's ridiculous. You know, we, we as Christians, we are spoiled with God's endless grace and love. And reconnecting with God is as simple as knocking on the door. We know that. He always answers. But in my stubborn human brain, you know, sometimes I still can't see past that. And, and I need almost a more pragmatic approach. And so for me, in, in this time of um, the, this law that I've sort of found myself in, the first action for me was simply putting some of these steps on paper, make this, make this very tangible. Um, and you know, therefore feel a little more achievable for me. And so I, I'll share a few of those thoughts that I've identified for myself as tools that I'm trying to use to sort of right the ship um, and to sort of find that, that spiritual enthusiasm again. So number one, um, I need to affirm that I am a child of God and, and I've been gifted unconditional grace and love. And I mean, this is, this is truly fundamental. Uh, you know, we need to remind ourselves of our value in God's eyes, you know, and, and know that we're never, we're never worthy. It's not our worth, you know, that God sees. God has unconditional love for us. And so no matter what place we're in, we can always cry out to God for renewal and forgiveness. You know, I, I look to, to David in Psalm 51. Uh, and we've heard this many times, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. You know, it's not, it's never been about our worth. You know, um, it doesn't matter where we're at. God's waiting for us. You know, we don't have to feel like we have to get ourselves up to a certain standard before we can come knocking on the door. You know, it's any time and any day he's there waiting for us. And, and I think we have to remind ourselves of that sometimes. Uh, number two, number two is a simple one, you know, immerse yourself in God's word. It's kind of funny. I think this is sort of the token answer to any of our struggles, you know, whether it be um, challenges with lust, anger, you name it, you know, uh, but this is the token reason or the token answers are for a reason. It's, it's tried and true. Um, this is something though, that admittedly, I'm not always the best at. I go through seasons where I'm quite consistent with my daily devotionals, um, but more often than not, I have room for improvement in this area. And, and again, the evidence is very clear. In those seasons where I am consistently in God's word, apathy is a non-issue. It, you know, it, it's, I don't even have to worry about it. It's in those extended seasons where maybe my daily disciplines have slipped uh, that I find myself struggling to find the motivation and the energy to live in the way that, that I want to for God. Excuse me. So if I look back at, at the times when, when, you know, when I felt I was really rocking it, like I was feeling connected to God and I'm growing as a Christian, um, that was when I was really committed to my daily disciplines. And of course that includes being in the word. So, you know, this is really not rocket science, right? We hear this a lot, but we have to, we have to really surround ourselves with God's word. Um, but it kind of goes beyond that as well. Because again, we want to make sure that we're not just simply checking boxes. We want to make sure that we're here to cultivate and grow our relationship with God. Spiritual apathy can kind of sneak in very, very uh, subtly, even if we feel like we're going through um, the right steps as a Christian, right? But the act of being in the word and sometimes even the act of regular prayer on their own does not necessarily fill you with the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I have found that in times when I'm struggling to make that meaningful spiritual connection, you know, I'm often still in prayer, but I think I find that I'm not actually spending time with God. You know, I find that I might be talking, but I'm not necessarily listening. And so this is a challenge that, that I find myself in sometimes, and especially when the busyness of life gets in the way. And so maybe I'm Maybe I'm sneaking in a quick morning prayer, but am I really spending that deliberate time with God, you know, getting to know God and growing that relationship? And, and I think uh, without that relationship, we're, we're at risk of, of falling into the trap of apathy. 
Uh, number four, and I'm going to steal a line from Dr. Dave here. We've, we've heard before him say that the opposite of addiction is community. And I think the same, same applies to apathy. You know, it's funny how when we're, when we're feeling apathetic or fatigued or depressed or whatever it may be, um, we have a tendency to distance ourselves from others. You know, quite the opposite of what we need to do. And, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's not reaching out to the brothers in this group or, or we're distancing ourselves or, or becoming closed off from our, some of our friends or family. And certainly in my case, sometimes it's that distancing from God. And when I've, when I've allowed spiritual apathy to creep in, then I tend to feel guilty. I feel, um, I feel the weight of that shame. And then I, because of that, I struggle to come to God, you know, the very thing that I'm feeling guilty about. So it's, it's this tricky, positive feedback cycle that the more I distance myself, the worse I feel. So the more I distance myself, you know, it's, it's something that we really have to watch for. Um, you know, I know in my heart always that God is the answer. Yet for some reason, it can be hard at times to face him when we're not at our best. So I would like to say then that the opposite of apathy is community. You know, our, our community is energizing and inspiring. You know, whether it's attending church service, making a phone call to a brother, just getting your butt out of bed right and early on a Tuesday morning to be here. Um, I can tell you Tuesday mornings for me have been such an amazing sort of maintenance tool for me. You know, there are times when I don't really feel like getting up and maybe I've been coasting a little bit and I'm feeling guilty about that. And, and with that guilt, of course, the desire to sort of distance myself. Um, but when I'm forced through my accountability here to get up and join this call, uh, I tell you, in minutes, those feelings of shame are washed away. My energy level rises. Um, I feel myself sort of motivated to attack the week ahead. Um, you know, it, it's incredible the power of that community. You know, God built us to thrive in community, and we need to use that community. You know, simple example of this, just this past week, you know, I wasn't, wasn't feeling at my best. Uh, made, made a phone call to one of the brothers in this group to just have a quick check-in. And I mentioned that I was feeling like I was in a bit of a lull. And, and he mentioned to me that when he's feeling down or a little bit off, he likes to, to write out a grad list and sort of meditate on, on all the blessings that God has provided. I thought, what, a, what an amazing idea. Such a simple act um, that can just really quickly uh, flip your mindset. And I thought, you know, being able to share things like this with one another, that's, that's just one simple example of the power of community. And it's just so important that we have those connections and, and we be there for one another and we build off each other. And, you know, for within that community too, we, we have so many resources that we're just so fortunate to have nowadays. Um, really, really convenient content at our fingertips, you know, an unlimited supply of podcasts, audiobooks, reading plans. There's always something that we can, that we can do to, to fill our time with, with God's word and, and to be in community. Um, sometimes picking yourself up and reconnecting with God. From the truth, but, but, but indeed that's the way I feel sometimes. And so for me, I was able to, you know, this, this past number of weeks when I was, was trying to sort of get myself going. I just started watching these regroup uh, Tuesday videos again uh, on the DFR website. And you know, it was, it was just a very easy, tangible way for me to, to make use of my commute and, and sort of sneak in some, some good time. And you know, it, it was really inspiring. And it was, it really, it really um, sort of did energize me again. You know, I went back I went back and tracked down one talk in particular. I went back and found Brian's talk from December of last year, where he talked about uh, the legacy that we leave behind. I, I wanted to hear this one again. This really spoke to me the first time I heard this, you know, uh, as a husband and a father who wants nothing more than to see my family grow in their faith and then pass that on to future generations. I thought, if I'm ever feeling a lack of motivation, you know, I need to look no further than within my own home. And, you know, I know that I need to be the best version of myself if, if I'm going to lead my family to Christ. And so just, you know, hearing 
uh, brothers share those words, uh, you know, in, in our active community, being around one another, that it's just such a powerful tool. I just, I encourage you guys to go back and watch some of these videos because there's some, some great content on there and there's so much, so much we can share with one another. Um, number, number six on my, my little to-do list here. Uh, remember that it's not supposed to be easy. You know, remember that Christ calls us to greatness through sacrifice. It was never supposed to be easy. You know, this, this Christian life, it's a journey. And sometimes it's a battle and this is expected. So I think sometimes we need to take some comfort in the fact that this is normal. You know, days that we're not at our best, even in our relationship with God, these are normal. And we have to take comfort in that fact that we're not unique in that, in that, and that we, we can expect to have ups and downs in this journey. Uh, in, in Luke chapter nine, verse 23, Jesus said to them, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And Jesus, Jesus said right there, it's a journey. You know, deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. Now, when we're feeling like things are hard, we can seek comfort in the understanding that our journey as a Christian man wasn't designed to be easy, but it's a road worth traveling and we need to pick ourselves up and move forward every day. And that sort of leads me to my, my last point as well, that change doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's a marathon. Sometimes looking at where we are and maybe comparing that to where we want to be can be daunting. So I suggest not simply looking to the end goal. Of course, we want goals, but we don't want to just look towards the end. Um, but rather, we can look to what we can start doing today uh, to pull ourselves out of that rut and how you can take one step in the right direction of good godly living and a deep and fulfilling relationship with Christ. So lastly, then how do we do that? You know, and, and I heard this, I heard this uh, said recently that, you know, we can take our progress 1% at a time, you know, that we have progressive incremental change that is not only very achievable, you know, 1% at a time, but it's also very sustainable. And so if, you know, if you want to be a better Christian man, you want to be a better husband, a better father, have a closer relationship with God, just commit to always being better than your former self, right? We, we talked a lot about not wanting to make comparisons uh, and looking up to others. Um, so really it's, it's you versus you for him. You know, if you can aim to just be a little bit better, even if it's just 1% better today than you were yesterday, you can ensure that you're continuously moving forward on that path that God has set out for you. You know, and it's one percent isn't much, right? I think that's something that we can all we can all aspire for, and that can be how we start our day with that goal of gaining one percent, and then at the end of that day, declaring victory uh, through God's grace. So, uh, in conclusion, gentlemen, you know, if you're if you're like me, and you know you experience the highs and lows of the Christian journey, as I'm sure you all have. And sometimes, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're somewhere in between. And when you just sort of feel stuck in that in-between stage, um, you know, try some of these steps that have helped me to pick myself up when I've needed it. You know, just in sort of a quick summary, those steps, you know, number one, remember that you are a much-loved child of God. You know, seek God, ask him to renew that spirit in you. Number two, immerse yourself in God's word. We always come back to this. It's always the truth. We need to be surrounded by God's word. Number three, really cultivate that relationship with God. You know, we're not here to, we're not checking boxes. We're not just going through the motions. Spend time, deliberate time, listening to God. Build that relationship. This is a journey that we'll be on for the rest of our lives. It doesn't, you don't just make that relationship with God and then move on. That's something that we grow every day of our lives. Uh, really seek to cultivate and grow that relationship. Number four, you know, and it's why we're all here, we need to seek community. We need to surround ourselves with, with good godly men. We need to learn from one another. We need to be there to support one another. We need to pick each other up. Um, you know, we, we provide that grit when needed and that grace in times of grace. And that community is such a powerful tool. It's certainly what keeps keeps me energized, that's for certain. Number five, 
remember that it's not supposed to be easy. You know, the Christian journey is, is a battle. Um, you know, we weren't built for comfort and complacency. We were built for sacrifice and we were built to, to take sometimes the, the more treacherous path sometimes on our journey to, um, to be the man that God created us to be. And, and take some solace in the fact that it isn't meant to be easy. So when you feel like you're you're struggling a bit, or when you feel like you're, even if you feel like you're failing, you know, know that you're not alone, and this is part of the journey, and you just need to press forward. And as you press forward, um, lastly, number six, you know, take it one percent at a time. Don't let uh, don't let yourself be discouraged if you don't feel like you're where you should be. If you're not meeting that picture in your own head of what you should be as God's son. And, and just ensure that you are better today than you were yesterday. Keep taking that step forward. Keep moving forward in a continuous path. Know that God loves you. Know that you're worthy. And, and just pray for that, that renewing spirit within you. Gentlemen, I kept it short and sweet today. I, I hope that some of what I've, I've shared today um, you know, triggers something with you. I, I really look forward to um, discuss that with you further further now and, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys.